So we get to the final P. Uh, in the course, we've already talked about projects and passion and peers, and now we come to play. And actually, in today's culture, there's a lot of talk about play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the last decade, you know, video games, computer games, mobile games have really become part of mainstream culture. And people talk a lot about, when people say play, they often think of those types of games. And in, the, in talking about learning and education, that's had a big impact as well. I think a lot of people see that there's such attraction to the new generation of games that, and that kids get so invested in that, they think, why can't we have that same type of investment in learning? So people often think, why don't we just bring games to learning? But in the conversation around that, I think too often play gets seen in a somewhat narrow way, in my view, that play gets associated with fun, that kids have fun with this, so let's make learning fun. Mm -hmm. And again, I have nothing against fun. <laughs> it's nice to you know, have things that are fun. But for me, that doesn't get to the heart of what you know, I think of when I think about play. Uh, but for me, the essence of play is not just about having fun, but it's more of an attitude of sort of exploring and experimenting, that play experiences are about taking risks, testing the boundaries, trying new things, exploring, experimenting. So, like playful, it's really about the attitude of playfulness. So it's not just about the play activity, but sort of your mindset or attitude to a playful way of engaging with the world. Because I also see that sometimes they think that they're in contrast, like we have to hide the learning in a playful, yeah. make it fun yeah. or make it like this pill, learning's this pill. And if you make it fun and put a game around it, they won't even realize that they're taking the pill. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think we both cringe when people say they won't even learn, realize they're learning. Yeah. Whereas about, we want people to realize well, they're learning. Well, also just that it can be an enjoying, yes. enjoyable yeah. yes. thing to be learning. Yes. And, and so that playful learning, bringing those together, that you're learning in a playful way and that it can be I mean, he couldn't even say it's a fun, it can be a fun experience, but it yes. could be, a, or not, but it doesn't always have to be, but at least it's a... But it's integrated. It's yeah, not that you right. sort of, that you make it playful to overcome the drawbacks of learning, but it's just having it really integrated as part of that process. Yeah, and, and I like, I mean, I like the playful framing because it also um, says that you could apply that attitude to lots of different things, yes. right? Mm -hmm. It's not just in the context of education or learning, right. but... You know, like, for example, I remember in the early days of the World Wide Web when it really was this new tool that no one had an idea of what to do with yet. And yeah. all the websites that people made, the first thing that everyone put on there was under construction. Right. And it was this kind of animated GIF that yeah. was... So it's a sense of experimentation. There was exactly. really a feeling that you're, everyone was experimenting. Exactly. And it wasn't done and kind of it was legitimate to be experimenting out in the open and making changes. And, and I think you, you told me a story about one of the scratchers. Who... Yeah, that we saw one of the scratchers had put up. She was really interested in dragons we saw. And one of the game she put up she said like a dragon game but it's it's not finished and then she said okay how do I make it do that I'm still tinkering with how to get it to turn around at the end of the stage and then she said oh well okay my next version is like dragon game two still mm -hmm. not finished yeah. right so it just kept being yeah that's great but too often well in scratch or other things you just see the final product yeah. and actually from the final product you really can't tell what the process was like so that was a great example that since she had multiple versions and wrote about it and reflected on it, you could see that there was a playful process that she was going through. And it's nice that she actually used the word tinkering because that's also a word we often use in thinking about that approach to learning, that you're constantly experimenting, trying new things. Uh, it's, like, it's in contrast to planning where in planning you might come up with a specific goal, you come up with a plan, you execute it and you're finished. And I think too often, a lot of school classes are organized that way. They teach you, here's the, the, the strategy, execute it, you'll get it done, and you'll be evaluated on how well you did it. Where the tinkering approach is much more of, you have something, but you're not quite sure how to do it. You start experimenting, and it gives you different ideas, and you might even change the goal as you do it. And start. We often see the kids will start on one thing, and as they tinker, they'll get some, they'll, it'll lead to other ideas. I think the same, I mean, this reminds me also a little bit about how we are designing this course, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we, we, I mean, we definitely spend some time thinking about what we want to do and what we want to achieve and kind of the, the sense of 
learning that we want people to have, but we didn't have the perfect plan, yeah. right? Like every week we learn something new, we make a little change, we try out something. Yeah, hear uh, what people say, right? That hear what people iteration say, exactly. and then shift yeah. depending yeah. on, yeah. Yeah, I know. I thought really good. After we did learning, creative learning the first time, I was at a group in New York, the Center for Children and Technology. And at lunchtime, I was giving a little report about our experiences with learning creative learning. And at the end of me sharing the experience, someone said, you've been tinkering with MOOCs. Uh, and they said exactly. that, and that, that made me feel good because yeah. that's what we wanted to be doing was that it's not that, that we were in the process of tinkering. And of course, part of our goal is to get other people to tinker. When we've developed you know, projects like Scratch, part of our goal is to help other people learn to tinker. Or, or when we create places like computer clubhouses, we want to create a space to allow young people to tinker. Mm -hmm. But we have to, it's important for us to keep tinkering as well. So I was happy that someone else saw that what we were doing with this course. But it came up though that some people think of tinkering as I'm just tinkering yeah. around and you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. And we think of it more constructively. Yeah. Than yeah. That. Well, people use play that way too. You're just playing. So mm -hmm. I think in both ways, people sometimes trivialize play and tinkering that is yeah, just messing around, but uh, sometimes messing around is an important part of the process. Right, and then sometimes a plan, often a plan comes out of like, we yes. feel like you need to become more familiar with the materials yeah. and the, and what's possible. You need to tinker first before you can come up with a plan rather than thinking before you even yeah. touch anything, come up with your plan, which I do hear yeah. a lot. Yeah, so it's not either or that I think a lot of the best play activities and learning activities involve sort of the shifting back and forth of experimenting, trying new things, but then having an idea and you're sort of going along a path and you plan the path, but then something goes wrong and you start tinkering again. So it's always this, this back and forth. And I think in the course, we do some of that as well. Um, <laughs> and so, so I, I think, so hopefully that's something that we can keep alive in our own work as to continue to have a playful approach to the way we do this course and the way we do all of the things that we work on. And I guess I'd also say that people applying the ideas from the course in a tinkering way, like Sherry Cohen said that that idea and Cynthia talked about the idea that this whole idea of tinkering helped them feel like let's tinker with the whole way that mm -hmm. we do our human rights work. Yeah. So I think that permission to tinker with whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah, so in addition to whatever ideas people are getting from the course or sharing in the course, I hope people come away from the course with a new uh, excitement about applying a playful spirit to whatever it is that they're working on. Yeah, and permission to tinker. We give the permission to tinker. <laughs> <laughs>